that's the key question, really. How much can we predict and, and how much ca can't we? You know, I think when we talk about making predictions about the future of society or the future or the way people will behave, we tend to think of that in terms of uh, wanting to be able to predict, for example, how to put your, invest your money on the stock market or how to you know, bet on the pools or the races or the football or whatever. And I think that's always going to be a difficult thing to do because it's always going to be very hard to predict individual events. Um, in, the same, uh, in the same way, it's going to be hard to predict what any individual in a crowd is going to do. What we can perhaps say is what the statistical outcomes uh, will be like, what the average behavior will be like. Paul, you really are a pioneer. I mean, 30 years ago, nobody gave a damn for emotions. And, and, and even less for the expression, the facial expression of emotions. Well, probably since Darwin and, 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 and William James, no? And uh, you've devoted to this 30 years. Actually, 40 years. 40 years, mm -hmm. no? First paper was in 57. Gosh, so that's a long time. Almost 50. And you're really, I mean, what people will always remember, is that against practically the views of everybody, you said facial expressions, I mean, oh, surprise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, anger, uh, oh, disgust. Oh, you're very good, you're very good. <laughs> and I should be photographing you. <laughs> well, you said these are universal. Well, you know, I started out thinking they weren't. I uh, was trained in the late 40s, early 50s, when everyone was really highly influenced by the cultural relativist viewpoint, yes. epitomized by Margaret Mead, so that anything that was important about social behavior was the product of culture. And it was really a Lockean view of human nature, that we are tabula rosa. And each culture, they even believed that there were cultures that had no emotion, at all, God. didn't exist, God. because it was a cultural invention. I thought so too. And actually, I hadn't read Darwin, I knew about his views, but having been trained that way, uh, I didn't think he was right. But I was given the money to go and settle the question, are expressions and gestures universal or culture-specific? I started thinking I would prove Margaret Mead was that right. That they were uh, and cultural. cultural. And what I found was exactly the opposite. So I am a scientist whose findings changed his mind. It was the artist that got me into science. In uh, 1965, John Cage invited me to a series of dinners where he would cook once a week for a group of young artists and uh, try out new ideas. And that one evening, he reached over, pulled a book out of his briefcase and handed it to me and said, this is for you and it was Cybernetics by Nova Wiener. And uh, that book uh, has been central to everything I've done ever since. The literary people, the so-called New York intellectuals, uh, had an arrogant attitude which disguised their ignorance. They knew nothing, but they were proud of it. You'd never get a scientist to be proud that he hadn't read Shakespeare. <laughs>